So I posted this on my Facebook page yesterday and it received over 150 comments. Some comments smart, some comments not so smart, some comments racist, some comments just stupid as hell. <laughs> I had asked the question, excuses, reasons, or in spite of. And some people agreed all three. But first, let me tackle some of the dumbass comments that made absolutely no sense whatsoever. For all those comments, and generally these comments came from Caucasians, they made the statements about how Africans sold Africans or how their every group has been a slave at some point in time in history to which I've made videos and I've expressed that very same thought, but in a different realm. But every group has become been slaves at some point. What does that have to do with this? This is talking about the American slave trade. First thing on there says American slavery. So this is obviously talking about the American slave trade. Then it talks about segregation. Something that happened right after the American slave trade in America. Jim Crow laws, all them sorts of things. And only since, and it's pushed 1954, but I would have pushed that till 1969. But it pushed all those things up until then. And then we are now in this very small period of time where things are somewhat or supposedly equal. What does slavery happening in India have to do with this? What does slavery happening in Africa have to do with this? What does who sold who have to do with this? With the point of this, with the question that I posed, absolutely nothing. What it is, is you're trying to create a distraction away from the fact that you don't want to deal with the outcome of that situation in America, of one of the most horrific things that this country has ever suffered through. You don't want to deal with it. And that's all you're saying when you say that. Now, to those who I thought were very smart answers. America, for, for a country that has become so great in power, economically and militarily and influence wise, that to, been, to have a history that involved that and to have the uh, African-American people or black people or whatever group you want to call yourselves, to in spite of the fact that we started it out 400 years after those first colonists came to the Americas. And we are where we are. We've achieved what we have achieved is actually a great thing. It's a great testament actually to the ideals of America, not the people, but the ideals of America, the ideals of everyone is created with inalienable right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happening happiness it's a great ideal just has not always been done um, appropriately and when you look at other groups who have also had to suffer through the mismanagement of the ideal where you talk about women and women's suffrage you're looking at Native Americans we look at um, the Chinese Americans the or any Asian American or the um, Hispanic Americans who have had to go through Jim Crow type events of their own the with the like the Anti-Chinese Act, Anti-Chinese Immigration Act, I think is the total title of it. Um, when you look at what they have achieved in spite of all the adverse adverse attitudes behind, you know, that was in, in front of them, all the ad, uh, adversities they had to overcome. Um, true, some of those groups had more advantages than those who were enslaved in this country. When you still have a home country, when you still have a culture and a history that you can look back towards, that you can connect with, when you got a home country, that makes a big difference. You know, so like when, a, when people from Mexico are in America, they have a culture that they can still keep. They can build communities around that. They can build um, families around that. And they can maintain themselves around that. Some of the native culture, they, they still maintain their culture. Not them so-called five civilized tribes. They flipped over to be European. But as far as everybody else, you know, the other tribes, you go out to the Sioux, the Apache, the Pueblo, they've been able to maintain the, uh, some semblance of their cultures. Those things make a big difference as to creating connective communities. Whereas the black people in America hasn't had that advantage. Hence why it is more difficult to create a community because our community has been tr 
truly melted a melting pot uh, in America. And, and see, a melting pot is not a good thing, really. A melting pot is when you throw everything in there and they merge into one thing. You know, and that was that's an idea. But no, it's like this one lady. I forget her name, but she was great at teaching about racism, um, white lady. And she was said that no, America needs to be more like a salad. You got lettuce, you got peppers, you got eggs and, you know, croutons and carrots. And you got a bunch of different variety because it's the variety that actually makes it great. Uh, unfortunately, those of us who are the descendants of slaves in America, we don't have that. We don't have that connection to a, a, a land, a group of people, a culture that we can then create community. And this is why there's a difference between like when I lived in Atlanta, you got this area is a bunch of Ethiopians and they have a culture there that they build around and they have a community that they build around and they come in together as a community. We had Nigerian areas. Um, we had um, Liberian areas because after the evacuation of Liberia in 90, they a lot of them came to Atlanta and there's a Liberian area. There's, you know, so they have that. So although some use this as an excuse to not grow, some of it is valid because of the hurdles that, put, that was put in place. Others, more critically thinking, do not look at it as an excuse, but as a reason why things are the way they are and what we still have yet to overcome. And then they combine that with the idea of in spite of. In spite of the reasons of the obstacles we've had to overcome, we are still, we have still made great strides. And we still have many great strides to still make. And we are making those strides. The media, and then there are some of those, some black people who came on here, on that comment. The media and some of those black people were trying to make it seem like we have regressed. They will look at the family structures. And yes, in certain areas, we are not doing as well because we did have community while we were under segregation and under slavery because we had a common enemy. We had a common issue that was going on. But now we've become so integrated that we've lost those common issues. And so our marriage numbers are not as high as they used to be. Our land owning numbers are not as high as they used to be. Those are areas that we do need to improve on that we have regressed from. But we have become like pretty much any other American culture. Uh, American Caucasian culture, rather, where we have if, if if a white person is murdered, they're most likely murdered by a white person. If a black person is murdered, they're mostly murdered by a black person. And they've tricked you into thinking that there is such a thing as black on black crime without thinking that there is white on white crime, Asian on Asian crime and so on and so forth. Crime happens in your neighborhood. Your neighborhood is generally people who look more like you. So therefore, everybody has cell phone self crime. But they don't want you to think about it, think through it in that way, but trying to make you think that you're just doing worse when actually we're doing better. If you were when my pappy was alive, he never agreed with the idea of the good old days to him. Born in 1927, his life was the bad old days and the time frame that he was living in, you know, in the 2000s, he would say that these are the good days. These are the good days. And if you can have that perspective, you realize that we're in a better position. And look at the fact that my pappy was born in 1927. My grandparents were born in, 19, in the 1930s. Um, my mother was born in the 1950s, I believe. So for them, and my mother is still alive today. She's 77 years old. So I guess I don't know what year that actually puts her in. I think it puts her in the 1950s. But <laughs> uh, 50s or 40s. The math ain't, ain't math right now in my head. But anyway, my mother lived through those times and she's still alive day, today. So she remembers segregation. She remembers integration. She remembers the Jim Crow because she lived in Carrollton, Georgia. And there are people in government, people who are in powerful positions who grew up in those times and they remember those times. And to them, those were the good old days. So that green space, that green line is not that old. We have not had a long time to alleviate the hurdles that have been put in our place. But if we continue to strive as we have, those hurdles will become, they will diminish more and more. I do believe we need to come together more. I don't know what the catalyst would be, but we do need to come together more. But in all things, remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.